Hi everyone. So um, it has come to my attention that a lot of fake pages have been created for me on different social media platforms. Um, asking people to give money, requesting um, some kind of support to some orphanage somewhere and they ask you to call. Um, I just wanted to do this disclaimer because I don't want you to be scammed by these people. Um, I do not ask for money in your DM or send you a message asking for money or asking you to give any kind of money to any orphanage or anything. I will not do that. Secondly, I have only one page on every social media platform. So on Instagram, I have one page at Pastor Mildred. On YouTube, um, it's Mildred Kingsley Konko and on Facebook is Mildred Kingsley Konko. Um, I do not have any other backup page or fan page or any of that sort of page. Um, so please be careful when you're dealing with people on social media. Be very careful. Um, my other handles do not have Pastor, do not have my surname is King Sukongo and not Okonko. So just be careful out there. Um, I also wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you for being a part of my tribe and the community on every platform. Because of you, I get to do what I do every day and I love doing it. Thank you everyone for being such a huge support um, to everything that I do. God bless you. Hey people, so if I have never invited you to be a part of Praying Pastor M, let me apologize officially and let me take this opportunity to invite you to be a part of a very growing family on Instagram. So if you're on Instagram, please follow me at Pastor Mildred and join me 3 p.m. every day, West African time, to be a part of what we do. Um, it's just a time where we get to learn about the Word of God, have fun, talk about real life issues, and just connect with each other. So please be a part of it every day of the week, Monday to Saturday, 3 p.m. with PM, praying with Pastor M. God bless you. Okay, let's start from Genesis 1. Um, from verse 1, the NLT. And of course, it's a scripture that all of us have probably used as memory verse at one point in time. But um, there's so much power in this scripture. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It says, the earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Let me explain what happened here. Um, first of all, I need to establish something with you. And I think one of the reasons why most of us may not understand kingdom or kingdom culture, because for you to have a kingdom culture, you must have kingdom consciousness. So you must understand how the kingdom works. First of all, a king is not elected. So the God that we serve is not elected. So he doesn't have four years. So you can't wait him out. And he's an eternal king. So he, not, he will not die. He will not be replaced. He cannot be removed. So when you enter into this kingdom, and I think one of the things that has unfortunately dulled us is the fact that we do not consider ourselves citizens of a kingdom. We call ourselves Christians. Now the challenge with what has happened with the word Christianity is that it has been reduced to a religion. Christianity is not a religion. It is the name of a citizen of a certain kingdom. So we're Christians and citizens of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of heaven is a place, okay? It is where God's kingdom is situated, where God stays, where the palace is. And then the kingdom of, the kingdom of God is the domain of the king, so where his influence spreads. So the kingdom of God is not a place. That's why God said there, and Jesus said that the kingdom of God is within you. It's not a place. It is an influence. And that is what we as citizens of that kingdom are supposed to carry and spread about. And that's where the seven mountains now come in. I don't want to jump ahead of myself. But I need you to understand the basic foundation of what a kingdom is. Now, a king, like I said, a king is not elected. So it's not, maybe because we are, most of us were born under a democracy. So I mean the closest most of us, any of us have come to understanding kingdom in Nigeria is maybe military dictatorship. But it's even not still the same. Because 
a president or a, uh, a head of state does not own the country. He just serves as a leader over it. A king owns his kingdom. So God did not just want to own heaven, which is the kingdom of heaven. He wanted another kingdom where he could have citizens who will worship him of their own free will. So what God did for us is something that he didn't have to do. Because even in natural kingdoms, a king owns the kingdom and everything in it. So think about the British kingdom, for instance. The king at that time of the French king of France, kingdom, French kingdom, or Spanish kingdom, any of those kingdoms, Sha, that's, if you can think about them, you will, you will be able to understand the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God just a little bit. Now, in those days, if they liked your wife, they would collect your wife because everything in the kingdom belongs to them. And they're not asking you for permission. They'll just say, bring Tolu. <laughs> She's very pretty and she looks intelligent, just bring her. And if you talk too much, they kill you. So what you do is you say, take sir, your king, lordship, take her. Do you want others that I can help you kidnap? And you will save your head. I'm just be going and going for another wife that is not as smart or as beautiful so they don't collect her again. But everybody understood that the king, that's why he could give sanctions. He could say, I've increased taxes. I wanted five goats before, but now I want 15. And the people could do nothing about it because it literally belonged to the king. Now, the difference between a natural king and our own king is that our king is a benevolent dictator. So out of the kindness of his heart, he's consistently thinking about how to do us good. So he wanted another kingdom. So that the very first thing you see in the Bible is God's will. It says in the beginning, God wanted a kingdom. So God created the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of earth. And he put citizens here. He said, let us make man in our image. I don't want robots. I want people who will serve me and love me of their own free will. So you are a citizen of this kingdom. Now what happened was, when he now brought this, these people that were created in his image, Adam and Eve, Mama Eve thought it better to disobey God. And by disobeying God, okay, I think I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let me also show you something. So, in a natural kingdom, and I want to use, for those of us who did history, maybe we'll understand it through colonialism. When someone takes over a kingdom or when they're expanding their kingdom, what happens is that they institute a governor over that kingdom. And that governor cannot be a citizen of the kingdom that they are coming to take over. It has to be a citizen from the kingdom that they are trying to establish here. So when God created the heavens and the earth, notice that he put a governor. The spirit of God began to hover. So the spirit of God was in charge on earth. He was the governor. What was the spirit of God to do? The spirit of God was to bring everything that was in heaven to earth. So Eden was literally supposed to be heaven on earth. And that's why God could come down and fellowship with man. And I believe that in those days they were speaking the heavenly language, which is tongues. He would come and he would speak with them and they would fellowship. God doesn't speak English. English is a natural language. It's not his, it's, do you understand? He understands you, but that's not his natural language. So the spirit of God was here as governor, teaching how we behave, how we think, how we act. Now, what makes a person independent? When we gained independence, what made us independent was the fact that that day, the governor that was instituted here by the British government, Her, Her Majesty the Queen, got on a ship and left. And people were waving goodbye. You can watch it, the documentaries, go to YouTube, you see it. They were waving goodbye. They brought down the British flag and they put up the Nigerian flag and then they started singing our own anthem. They said bye-bye. What makes you independent is when this, the governor that is instituted lives. So when Adam and Eve sinned, the spirit of God had to go. And we lost communication with God. And God needed to get that back. And because God is a God of order, he couldn't just say, you know what, Satan came here illegally. 
Because Satan too understood that he's a spirit being. Spirits cannot reside on the earth. What resides on the earth is anything that has a body. Once you have a body, you have a right to be on this earth. That's why if your body breaks down, your spirit will go back and you will die. You don't have a right to be here again. That's why demons, ghosts, and all other spirits are illegal here. And that's why we have authority over them. So Satan knew this. And he knew that there was no way he would be able to. He can't go and just tell Eve. Eve. She won't answer him. So he needed a body. So he told the serpent, come borrow me your body. That one did deal with him and gave him body. And he came. And he deceived Eve. Did you notice that when God was cursing Adam, he didn't curse Satan, he cursed the serpent. Because you too, you were in on this arrangement. This is your punishment. From now, you'll be crawling on your belly. So he had a punishment as well. But God knew that he couldn't break his own laws. That's why God is holy. If God ever breaks his word, we can't trust him again. So he knew that the only way for him to win is to come back in a body. So he had to come back and be born with a body so that he could rectify the damage that had been done. When Jesus came, notice the first thing that Jesus said. Jesus' first message was repent for the kingdom of God is here. He didn't come and say any other thing. He said, I came here to restore the kingdom that was lost. I came here to bring back God's influence on the earth. That's what Jesus came for. He didn't just come to die for your sins. He brought a kingdom. That's why he came back. And you see, he came with a message that the only way you can receive this kingdom is if you change the way you think. That's what the word repent means. Repentance has nothing to do with sin. It has nothing to do with, I'm sorry, I sinned, Lord. No. Repentance is change the way you think. Because the place where the, the, the real war is, is your mind. The reason why you are still sinning is because your mind has made excuses for it. The reason why you are still fornicating is because you are telling yourself it's a weakness and not a sin. Rename it. The reason why you are still lying is because you are, it's acceptable. You have told yourself it's a weakness. A sin is a sin. One of the things I always tell myself is never lie to yourself. Never lie to yourself. Call a spade a spade. If what you are doing is bad, tell yourself it's bad. I was in the car one day and someone was listening to a message. Um, it was the season when Basuki was preaching on favor. And so someone was, preaching, someone was listening to a message in the car. Another pastor, who I like, incidentally, was preaching favor and was literally preaching everything what Pascal was preaching. And the first thing that came out of my mouth was, oh, the spirit of God is one. And then the Holy Spirit said something to me. He said, but if it is another pastor who you don't like, that is, you say, hmm, they're the copy for this kingdom. They can't get their own revelation. So I said it out. I said, hmm, what people? If not another pastor now. And my PA turned to me and said, Mama, what did you just say? I said, out of my own mouth, I judge myself. Oh, now go judge me. That's how it works. So, Jesus came and said, change the way you think. Change the way you think because the kingdom of God is here. Interestingly, kingdom culture is very opposite of natural culture. But like I said before, the only way you can understand kingdom culture is if you are conscious of the kingdom. Now, there are certain things that govern any kingdom. And like I said before, this kingdom, there's no democracy. God is in charge. God is the ruler. And this is where, the, the, and God wants, expects us that this influence that he's bringing will touch every area of life. It's not something that you will just, you just say, oh, the kingdom of God is here, we'll enter church. And you see, that sometimes is what really breaks my heart. That we have reduced what Jesus came to do to a religion. Jesus didn't come to die for you to be able to feel Christian on your form. He didn't even die for you to be able to blind, you see, we'll be blasting tongues in church and blocking each other's ear. It's much more than that. What we have is actually a military regime. This is a political order. It is not a religion. It is not just about laying hands on the sick. It is not just about, you know, prophesying to each other and calling each other's phone number 
and the number of your house, you are wearing green. There's somebody here. This morning you ate beans. God is saying, that's not, we have reduced it literally to a mockery. What Jesus came for. And that's why in those days, they didn't understand because that word Messiah is a military term. So in those days, what they were thinking was that he would come and he would deal with the Romans and give the Jews their freedom. And Jesus said, I'm not going to do things the way you think I'm going to do them. And that's why God keeps saying, your ways are not my ways, your thoughts are not my thoughts. He's saying, the way I think is the way heaven thinks. And until you change the way you think, you can't fully appreciate the kingdom. So your mind, first of all, deal with your mind. Deal with your mind. Stop thinking it's about us being in church and who can quote the scriptures the most. Nobody cares what you can quote if you don't live it. You can know the scripture in every version. You can explain it away, but until you start to live it, until you start to live with the consciousness that I live for a king and a kingdom, which is one of the reasons why I'm so strong on living for an audience of one. I say it all the time. Because the world, I'm not of this world. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. So they do not dictate to me how I live. They do not dictate to me how I dress. They do not dictate to me the songs that I listen to. Everything they are doing is conditioning you. Everything. That's why God is interested in us understanding kingdom so that we can carry his domain everywhere. We can carry his influence into everything that we do. That's why I love that scripture, Romans 12, 1, very much, the message translation. That says you should take everything, you're eating, you're sleeping, you're waking up life, walking around life, say, and place it before God as an offering. If you are conscious that you are living for a king and everything that you do matters to him, you will understand what kingdom is. Kingdom is not my church. It's, I'm telling you, it is so heartbreaking what we have turned Christianity into. The kingdom of God goes beyond David's Christian Center. Uh, what other churches are there? Winners. And we are one body. Until we understand that. And that's why I don't understand. If we understand kingdom, we understand that you can't be fighting another Christian. Why are you fighting somebody in your army? We're at war. You just turn and say, I don't like the way this person, you know, where, you know cover her head. Just shoot her. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're looking for more people in the army so that we can win. Say the way... I've already told I'm going to use that to preach this morning. The way Mr. Blessings tear her two knees. I don't think she's very spiritual. Let's shoot her. We'll shoot her. And she will come up and worship. She didn't even cover her hair. Is this worship even rising to the Lord? How do you know? Is the worship to you or to the Lord? I don't know why she's always the one thing. I don't even, I don't even feel her worship. That's okay because she's not worshiping you. Even though I'm still beefing her this morning, she will do revive t shirts for everybody and go and do bomber jackets. I'm still beefing her. But we don't kill our own. Even when, yes, I don't judge her. Even when the person on our side has offended, our job is not to kill them. Christians are so ignorant of this thing. That's why Jesus said that the children of this world, they are wiser in their own dealings than the children of light. They will do something bad. They will not kill their own, no. Maybe most of their musicians are started, they don't burn outside. You see baby mama everywhere. And I'm not saying it's right. But if we want, if, if we hear, not, be saying, not confirm though, if we hear that a pastor, not even pastor, a me, a pa, let's not finish the story. Let's just hear that a pa did something wrong. We are the ones that will go to social media. Forgetting that the media is where we should influence God's kingdom, not destroy God's kingdom. So we talk about tithe. It is the Christians that will go there and say it's true. They're everything. The other day, they were dragging themselves on Insta blog. That I said that you can't be angry if a pastor is driving private plane because you don't know the sacrifices he has made. You see, I've made up my mind. Eh? That is either they leave social media for me, or the, we we cohabit on that social media. But that social media, God's kingdom will be established there. 
it's important that you understand your sphere of influence and sit on it. That's what kingdom is. We are kingdom citizens to expand the kingdom. When, the, when they came, when the British government came to Nigeria to colonize, they came to expand their kingdom. Do you think they just like you? They brought church and school. Are, are they joking? They came to expand their kingdom. They will come in with good things, but they will expand their kingdom. All of you here can speak English. Why? Because they came to bring their kingdom influence. So they brought their language. It's part of influence. See the way you are all dressed. Even, the one, even those of us that wear Nankara, we still swan like a Igbo cloth. It's influence. They brought their kingdom influence. Even your neck is pain, you go still not tie to go office. It doesn't make you more productive. No, but they have established their kingdom influence. So even though they've left, they are still here. And that's what God is saying. Don't get so distracted that you don't remember where you're coming from. You're now becoming like this world. Uh, we cannot say it. Uh, you know, you have to be politically correct and spiritually wrong. Ah, uh, you cannot. They will drag you on social media so as they drag me, I don't lose weight. If to say they were a person lose weight, they drag me daily. As they drag me, I don't even notice the dragging. Because I don't follow them. They are following me. <laughs> you must understand who you are. I'm a, I'm a citizen of a higher kingdom. Appointed by God. I didn't just go, I'm sent. So until we get to that point, we understand that we're here to increase God's influence. His kingdom must expand. It's not a physical kingdom, it's an invisible kingdom. Which is even better. And let me tell you, that's what Jesus came with. Jesus came with an invisible kingdom. Do you notice that when they wanted to kill him, they didn't recognize him? They had to get somebody inside to show us the person, kiss him so we know who he is. An invisible kingdom. But his impact was felt. That's kingdom. That's kingdom. Understanding that it goes beyond you and your church. There's so much more to God's kingdom than my church. It is the body. So we're after kingdom advancement and kingdom enhancement. So if Winners is doing something, I will pray in my bedroom as if it's DCC that is doing it. If Elevation is doing something, I will pray as if it is DCC that is doing it. And whether they invite me or not, I will attend. Hey, I don't have to be a guest minister. If somebody is doing something for your kingdom, and you feel the Spirit of God staring you to sow towards it, by all means, release your money for the kingdom. We were too busy killing each other. You judge us, you know we're scared. The, can, they, can, the, can the word be in their mouth? It can't be in our mouth. She, she doesn't see where her skirt level is safe. She should not cover her head. I mean, I went to a church once to minister. After ministering, um, they gave... <laughs> The women, the head of the women gathered themselves to give me gift and give me hearts. <laughs> and told me that it's not good for me to preach with my head uncovered. And I started thinking, wow, so you all missed everything God came with because you were focused on whether I wore a hat or not. And to be honest, if I had known that that would distract them, I would have covered my head because I would do anything for the kingdom. But we are majoring on the minor things. There are more important things. Expanding God's kingdom. That's your office. Your job is to expand his kingdom. You can't be in that office three years and people have not changed. You know, yesterday, oh, yesterday, yesterday we had Kyle conference. And initially, I was going to cancel that meeting. If I had called Pastor Maka and Blessing and I said I was going to cancel the meeting. But thank God, I'm a woman under authority. Pastor K insisted that I should do the meeting. So I obeyed, I submitted and I did the meeting. And I thank God I did that meeting. Not because DCC women came. Because to be honest, we had, over, we had about 160 women and I kept it that small because I wanted it that small. We had about 160 women. Of that 160 women, if DCC women were there, about 30 women or 35. Outsiders filled the place. And I think that, because at some point, 
you know, some of my ministers were getting upset. We'll be doing things for women. In da, da, da. I say, see, a prophet is not without honor except in his own home. So I'm not offended. I'm not even upset when we do things, you know. But God did something for me yesterday that changed everything. And that, that has increased my resolve to make sure that I expand his kingdom. So yesterday I was standing at the back. Um, I finished ministering and women were eating, you know. So, of course, you know, when we do our programs, we throw down. So they were eating. Those that came yesterday, you know. How many of you are purging this morning? <laughs> so anyhow, one lady came to meet me at the back. <clears throat> and I was just standing and just watching the women and just generally just being grateful, you know, that God, thank you for privilege and opportunity to be the one you sent to do this. I was just standing at the back and one woman came to meet me. And she said, good, good afternoon, ma'am. And because name tags, they had name tags, so I called her by her name, you know. And I said, oh, how are you? She said, oh, I'm very fine, ma'am. She said, hmm. Pastor M, you don't know me. I'm not a member of your church, but I want to say thank you. Um, so, of course, a lot of people came yesterday to say thank you. So I just smiled the usual, oh, thank you, thank you, that kind of thing. She just said, no. And then she started tearing up. And she said, a couple of months ago, I was diagnosed with cancer. Then I started joining 3 p.m. with p.m. Then I started joining 11 p.m. And she said, I came here today to tell you thank you because I'm cancer free. I go. I don't know if anything else mattered at that moment. I just said, you know, there are days I wake up and I'm exhausted. I don't want to do 3 p.m. with p.m. I have nothing to say. I'm exhausted. I'm like, God, I can't. And he would just say, just show up. She's some bears me witness. I, there are days I'm tired. Like, I'm, I'm, and I'm asking myself, is it even, does it, is it even making a difference? Some days I'm even in the car, I don't even have anything to say, I'll just laugh. And people will send me DMs that you brought joy into my life today. Let me tell you, that thing you think is small, God can use it. No matter what it is, somebody would be in chemo right now. And I don't take it for granted. Somebody would be in chemo right now. That she sat down for months watching 3 p.m. p.m. Please, what am I saying? What am I saying there? Some days when I, I'm even, I, to be honest, yesterday I had this whole message planned out. And, and I'm telling you, if you focus on the king, he will use you to expand his kingdom. Yesterday I had this whole message planned out. I was going to tell, tell women that, I beg, don't kill yourself. No husband and children all the time. Have fun, enjoy, relax. Let God bless you to you to have dreams. I had planned the message. Not only had I planned the message, Pastor Amaka and I had discussed it. I said, I beg, we have prayed, we have worked for men, men will not go die. Let's pray for ourselves too. Let's so in fact, the prayer insisted that the prayer would be for the women. Because women don't pray for themselves. My women don't pray for themselves. If it's not husband, it's children. If it's not children, it's so my husband's work. My husband must prosper. My husband, my husband, my husband. And women are dying. Because as you are not praying, as you are praying for your husband, nobody's praying for you. So I said, no, you must pray for yourselves. So I had this whole thing planned out. I will forget where I even... I even them play like children. Do musical chairs. Play. Any, any, anything where they scatter for us, when we reach there, we'll go repair them. We cannot come and kill ourselves and die. Let's just... Just before, so... Minister God went up to pray. At the point she said praying, she prayed the last prayer and she said... Um, she said something about setting our hearts on fire and... At that point, something just broke. And God said to me, Oh, backsliding daughter, when will you return? <laughs> he said, For a woman shall be an encompass around her man. Ah, I said, God, this is unfair. This is not what we planned. We've been doing this 365 days a year. Give us one day. 364 is not too much to sow into this man, but give us. And he asked me a question. He said, How can you get a job and now say you are not doing it again because you are angry with the person you are reporting to, but you want to be paid? It doesn't work like that. So ch I changed my message. At some point, I even thought I was being too harsh because I started shouting at the women. So you're angry, sorry, do God's work. Pray for your husband, invest in him, advise him. I started, 
But I still struggled with it a bit. After the service, one woman came to meet me. A woman that had been married for 23 years. If at some point I was telling her, I said, see, I was telling them, I said, see, don't be FBI. If your husband is even cheating on you, don't bother. Just focus on God. He will fight for you. I told them, I said, there are scriptures that deal with those kind of people. Side chick. There are many. It's the prayer book that I've not had time to release. Some, it is infertility. Some is fibro. Some is death. There are different levels. Some is you are living, but you are dead. You are dead meat. You know, so I, I was saying, I said, me, people don't offend me, oh, because I never pray about anybody. I focus on God. He's the one that even gossips to me, say, come. The way he did with Moses, say, come. There are people gossiping about you, I've dealt with them. That's how God does. I will just see a vision, I will see what he has done with the person, I will just move on with my life. So I was telling him, I said, don't, don't bother yourself, don't do FBI. One woman came to meet me after 23 years, investing in her marriage. When she met her husband, he had nothing. Today, they are rich. One thing that I don't know where she came from. Whether it's a living thing or a non-living thing. <laughs> Just came three months ago. See, her husband went to marry her. She called, the man said, there's nothing you can do about it. We have gone too far. Me, I know it's all those guests that used to do the special package. I told her, I said, let me tell you the truth. Don't let, because what will happen, what Satan tries to do is he tries to distract you. from Because this woman is a kingdom woman. She serves in her church. And she has totally changed her life around fight, running after. That's what Satan tries to do. Focus on God. You are doing as if this God, he does not know what he's doing. Once you make up your mind to serve God, I'm telling you, 3 p.m. with p.m., what, what, <laughs> as in the testimonies, something as simple as showing people that there are other versions of the Bible beyond King James. More people are reading their Bible. More people are now willing to obey God. What's that? Expanding God's kingdom. I can sit back and complain that social media is bad, social media is bad. Let me tell you, nothing in this life is bad. It is in the person's hand that it is that determines whether it's bad. Social media is not good, it's not bad. It is you that you are handling social media that determines whether it's good or bad. So let's go there and flood it. Let's flood it with the right things. There's something God will give you. You can't be in your office and nobody has changed. And you see, the lowest form of evangelism is words. People should look at your life and change. It shouldn't be what you say. People should look at your life and want to be better. That's kingdom. So I have three, three more minutes. Let me, <laughs> I mean, I, this is not what I want to talk about today. Let me run through a few things that make you know what kingdom is. So in this kingdom, there are some things that are established, okay? The elements of any kingdom, there are some elements of any kingdom. There's authority, there's law, there's government, there's citizenship, and there's culture. When you have these five things, or in my opinion, six, I'll add the sixth one. When you have these six things, then you know that it is a kingdom. So number one, authority. Jesus is our king. So when Jesus died, he came to give us a new kingdom. Our king, and he's a sovereign king. What that means is that it is only what he says that is established. We are not moved by what anybody else says because our king has spoken. So that's number one. Number two, there's law. We have a constitution. It's called the Bible. How do you know? And you see, this is also the problem with Nigeria. Most of us don't even know. Most of us don't even know we have a constitution. We just hear it. Oh, the 1989 constitution. Most of us don't know what's in that constitution. Most of us have never read it. And we carry that same attitude into the kingdom of God. We've never read our Bibles. That's why I'm always shouting, read your Bible for yourself. And this Bible, I don't know why everybody, Bible with a sweet like this. Comedy, it did there. Action, it did there. Drama, it did there. The nature and the character of God is there. Somebody cannot lie to you about how God is because you can go and see it for yourself in the Bible. So all this, don't worry, God loves everybody. We're not going to see, see, God is, see, God also is a consuming fire. Yeah, your sin is too bad. God is a merciful father at the same time. There's nothing you have done that is too bad for God to reach you. Read your Bible is there. How do you know what you're entitled to? Abraham's blessings are my what are they? What are they? You have to search. You see, and it's because we do not treat the kingdom like it's a political or a military regime. That's why we don't understand these things. That's why you think that crying will get you something in the kingdom. No, you go to the law courts. 
with your Bible and you say, according to subsection this of this chapter, this is what you said. And according to the case of Abraham, when Abraham versus this, 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 and Isaac versus the, he has no choice. He can't go back to his word because it, he can't go back on his word because a decree of a king cannot be reversed. That's why you are crying. Imagine going to the law court and you are crying. What do they say? They will just adjourn the case. When you have settled that you come back. That's why your prayer is being delayed. You are crying, they are joining it. When you can talk, come back. When you are ready with your case and your facts, you come back. Then the king will listen to you and he will make his judgment. And I guarantee you he's a righteous judge. So there's law. So the first thing is we have a king. There's authority in our kingdom. There's law in our kingdom. There are things that we must do and things we cannot do. Then there's government. There's government. Interestingly, the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones, we are supposed to be the government of God on this side of the kingdom. We're supposed to be establishing his kingdom. What is obtainable in heaven should be obtainable here on earth. There should be no sickness because we are here. Instead, we all ran into our houses and covered our noses. That's all I'm going to say about that. So that's our job. We're supposed to go into every kingdom. That's why I said go into all the nations. You know, and that's part of what we do in the kingdom. We are... We are supposed to be involved in international, no, international relations. Because if I say national, I know is our nation, different nations. We should be able to relate with different nations. So if you are in education, you should be able to bring the kingdom and the will of God, his influence, into the nation that you are in. If you are in the nation of banking, media, you should bring it there. That's what we are. We are not supposed to just gather and worship. That's not really what he's interested in. It's not just singing. And I don't even know who told us worship is singing. It's just an expression of. If your heart is not right, you are not obeying his commandments, and you are singing, you are making noise. Then in this kingdom, there's citizenship. You can't just say, I'm a citizen of this kingdom. There's citizenship in every kingdom. Is it that you are born into a kingdom, you marry into the kingdom, or that's normal natural kingdoms? Is it that you are born into a kingdom, you marry into the kingdom, or you do some exams or something to enter the kingdom, right? It's the same way. You have to be born again. Because the born you were born before was into a natural kingdom. For you to enter this kingdom, you must be born by the spirit to enter this kingdom. So you can't just say a citizen, there's a, there's a point where you know that you are a citizen. They give you birth certificates. He's called the Holy Spirit. He becomes your governor. Every kingdom has language. Every kingdom has their language. And that's why when you go to a kingdom to, to establish influence, you bring your language. All the people that were colonized by the French, they speak, they speak, they speak French now. We, we are here next to Shebis Kotonu. What do they speak there? They speak French. Why? Because the French people came to colonize them. We speak English because the British people, and we're next door. But we can't understand each other. So every kingdom has a language. What's the language of this kingdom? Tongues. So how do we know you are a citizen of this kingdom? Evidence of speaking in tongues. So I may not know you from anywhere. In fact, I can go to a, a church in Russia. And I won't understand anything they are saying until they say, let's pray. And then I say, makalabo, shata, re, ke, ke, ke. Different things with that. And I can connect with them at that point. The minute we stop praying in tongues, everybody goes back to their natural kingdom. But that's what unifies us. That's why when the Spirit of God, the governor came back, the first thing he did was to restore language. Tongues of fire, they started praying in different languages, they started praying in tongues. He came back to restore language. So that's why you can't be afraid to pray in tongues in public. If somebody's speaking Yoruba, why can't you speak tongues? Can't be ashamed. It's our language. That's what I'm saying. When you understand kingdom, you'll be intoxicated. It's our language. Finally, every kingdom has culture. There's a certain way of life. Immediately you see a Yoruba person, you know this person is from Yoruba kingdom. Me, you see an Igbo person, you know this person is from Igbo kingdom. The British, you know them. The way they dress, the way they talk, the way they act. You will know. It's the same way there's a culture in the kingdom. 
There's a way we behave. There's a way we behave. So our job, as I round up, I'll talk about kingdom culture, I'll break kingdom culture down in second service. But I needed you to understand the culture of the kingdom, that we're citizens of this kingdom. Your job as a citizen of this kingdom is to spread the influence of this kingdom. So it's not enough that you come to church on Sunday, you have to take church out of church into your field wherever you are. You go out there and do international relations. Were you blessed this morning? Hey people. So if I have never invited you to be a part of Praying Pastor M, let me apologize officially. And let me take this opportunity to invite you to be a part of a very growing family on Instagram. So if you're on Instagram, please follow me at Pastor Mildred and join me 3 p.m. every day, West African time, to be a part of what we do. Um, it's just a time where we get to learn about the Word of God, have fun, talk about real life issues, and just connect with each other. So please be a part of it every day of the week, Monday to Saturday, 3 p.m. with p.m. Praying with Pastor M. God bless you. Hi, everyone. So um, it has come to my attention that a lot of fake pages have been created for me on different social media platforms. Um, asking people to give money, requesting um, some kind of support to some orphanage somewhere and they ask you to call. Um, I just wanted to do this disclaimer because I don't want you to be scammed by these people. Um, I do not ask for money in your DM or send you a message asking for money or asking you to give any kind of money to any orphanage or anything. I will not do that. Secondly, I have only one page on every social media platform. So on Instagram, I have one page at Pastor Mildred. On YouTube, um, it's Mildred Kingsley Konko and on Facebook is Mildred Kingsley Konko. Um, I do not have any other backup page or fan page or any of that sort of page. Um, so please be careful when you're dealing with people on social media. Be very careful. Um, my other handles do not have Pastor, do not have my surname is King Sukongo and not Okonko. So just be careful out there. Um, I also wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you for being a part of my tribe and the community on every platform. Because of you, I get to do what I do every day and I love doing it. Thank you everyone for being such a huge support um, to everything that I do. God bless you.